Twelve years after the discovery of the human embryonic stem cell, research is finally picking up steam. Over the past seven years, the NIH has more than tripled its investment in stem cell research to over a billion dollars. The number of embryonic stem cell lines funded by the government has doubled. More than 200 U.S. companies are researching stem cells. So the report card on stem cells is promising but incomplete. Two years ago, scientists found another way to create stem cells from ordinary skin cells. That breakthrough lets researchers study diseases in a dish. For example, skin cells from a patient with ALS have been turned into the kind of nerve cells attacked by the disease. For the first time, those living nerves can be studied outside the body to figure out what goes wrong. It's amazing. What can you say? Stem cell biologist Larry Goldstein says studying disease is like investigating a plane crash. What you're really looking for is the black box of disease, in a sense. What's the black box of Alzheimer's disease? What's gone wrong when the plane started to go down? Once researchers figure out what goes wrong in diseases, they can test drugs in the safety of a Petri dish before trying them on patients. We're building foundations right now, and so the science is moving along very well. The problem? How to harness the tantalizing potential of stem cells. It takes a lot of work to make this happen. No one knows that better than John Kessler. Nine years ago, a phone call changed his life forever. That's the kind of call that nobody ever wants to get. His 15-year-old daughter, Allison, was injured in a skiing accident. She was paralyzed from the waist down. It was a moment of despair. It was a moment of knowing what I faced, knowing what my daughter faced. He knew because he's a neurologist. On the way to the hospital, he had an epiphany. Now I know what I have to work on, uh, and it's spinal cord injury. Dr. Kessler is now a leader in the field. So these are neural stem cells? He's turned stem cells into nerves and helped heal animals with spinal injury. Is this a cure for spinal cord injury? No. Do we think that it's very likely this will help people? We think so. Today, Allison is an outgoing 25-year-old. <laughs> we do, we do talk about it. Her father's greatest wish is that one day his work will help her walk again. If there is a cure to find at this day and age with current science, he's the one that's going to push the envelope. I literally had just flipped the page. And I Allison has moved on with her life. <laughs> this is a left anterior hemi block. She's now in medical school. More than a dozens of times has told me, Dad, get over it. Come on, you know, uh, just move on. So, um, I mean, she's handled it remarkably well. And can you just move on? No. I'll never get over it. Never. The solution can't come fast enough for patients desperate for help now. It's like we're putting a very, very young chunk of spinal cord into an adult. Later this year, Dr. Hans Kierstedt of UC Irvine, working with Geron Corporation, will begin the first FDA-approved trial of human embryonic stem cells to treat paralyzed patients within two weeks of injury. Wow, these are looking really, really nice. In spinal cord injury, the insulation coating the wires in the cord is destroyed. Electrical messages from the brain can't get past the point of injury, and function is lost. And it's like you've got a bunch of wires that are short-circuiting. The tissue that's left doesn't work because they can't conduct electricity up and down your cord. That's it. Kierstedt nice. and his team figured right, out a way to turn stem cells into this cell. This is actually the insulating material. That's the insulating material. Of it makes insulation for the spinal cord. Millions of these cells will be injected into the damaged area. The hope is by restoring the insulation, the spinal cord will work again. I expect incremental benefits to the humans that receive this. I think they're going to get better, and I'm just dying to find out if I'm right. So we're trying to make the therapies more effective. More Stem cells have even given scientists a brand new way to think about cancer. And we think that there are these cells at the root cause of cancer called cancer stem cells. Stem cells are normally present throughout our bodies and help us replace cells that are worn out or damaged. But these normal stem cells can produce cancer stem cells that create regular cancer cells and tumors. While chemotherapy kills regular cancer cells as they divide, cancer stem cells survive by lying dormant, then springing to life and causing relapse. Getting rid of the most robust cell within the cancer that has the capacity to regenerate the whole cancer is how to really expunge the cancer and make sure that people don't relapse. This new approach may have saved Teresa Blanda's life. In 2008, blood tests showed she was close to developing leukemia. And a year and a half ago, could you have walked like this? Um, with a walker or a cane. Eighteen months ago, she enrolled in a clinical trial using a drug that Dr. Jameson and her team developed. It attacks cancer stem cells in her blood. Now she's back to a normal life. Did you ever imagine that you'd be sitting here No, like to be honest with you, I don't think I imagined myself sitting here, period. 
Even if everything goes right, stem cell-based treatments won't be widely available for years. Still, this may be one of those rare instances in medicine when the hype is actually deserved. Katie? So fascinating. Some scientists want to destroy stem cells, like in cancer, and others obviously want to create them. Right. Really interesting piece, John. Thank you so much.